Hi, my name is Greg Caparaso. I'm an associate professor in the Center for Applied Microbiome Science in the Pathogen and Microbiome Institute at Northern Arizona University. Thanks for visiting the new Chime 2 YouTube channel. Over the next few months, we're planning to add a lot of new educational content to this channel, including the content from our first ever online Chime 2 workshop in October of 2020. If you'd like to get updates when that content is available, you can subscribe to this channel below. You can also check in on the Chime 2 forum. We'll be posting announcements about this content there as well. In the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about where we're going with Chime 2. I'm going to cover some interesting features of Chime 2 that support global engagement in the project and support reproducible research. And then I'll wrap up by talking about the Chime 2 community and how you can get involved. Now, while my lab at Northern Arizona University leads the development of Chime 2, it's a massive global collaboration. This is well illustrated by the author list on the Chime 2 paper, which we first published in July of 2019. There are 112 co-authors on the paper from 77 different institutions and 10 different countries. All of these folks contributed to the design, the development, the documentation, or the support of Chime 2. We couldn't have done it without them. Chime has traditionally been used as a marker gene analysis platform, typically for things like 16S surveys or ITS surveys, but we're currently working on making Chime into a microbiome multiomics platform. Now I like to use an analogy when I describe what I mean by this. In geographic information systems or GIS systems, we usually think of representing information in data layers. Um, and so, for example, if you're trying to model the real world, you would have different layers maybe representing land usage, elevation, where parcels are, where roads are, where customers are. And depending on what you're trying to do with this model, you might need uh, different layers on and off. So, for example, if you're planning a construction project, you might need to use different layers than if you're planning a hiking trip. Now, when I think about modeling microbiomes, I think we should also think of this in terms of layers. And the layers in a microbiome system might be things like taxonomy. So, say, for example, what bacteria and archaea are present based on 16S surveys, um, but also things like the functional potential of the community, which you might get from a shotgun metagenomic survey, um, or the functional activity of a system, which you might get from a metatranscriptome profile, a metabolome profile, or a meta. Uh, uh, metaproteum profile. Now I think that to accurately represent microbiomes we need to think about integrating these different layers and that's exactly where we're moving with Chime 2. Uh, we plan to add support for analyzing these different data types and importantly for integrating them with one another so that we can learn more from the combination of these different layers than we could from either of them on their own. Now you might wonder, how are we possibly going to develop the functionality for all of these different, uh, all of these different domains? Um, and the answer is we're not. Chime 2 is a plug-in system. Um, what that means is anybody can create and distribute a plug-in and that all of the bioinformatics functionality in this system comes through plug, uh, comes in the form of plugins. Um, we are currently working on a site called the Chime 2 Library, which is a platform for discovering and disseminating plugins. If you're interested in learning about what some of the cool new functionality is that's available through Chime 2 plugins, go to library.chime2.org. If you're building a plugin or you're building microbiome bioinformatics functionality, go to library.chime2.org and think about making your methods accessible there. You'll have, uh, you'll have quick access to Chime 2's large user community. Um, the Chime 2 library is currently in development, supported by the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. So if you go to this site, you'll find our current version, but there's a lot of new functionality coming that is gonna make it a lot easier to make methods accessible and to help users discover new functionality. Another very cool feature of Chime 2 is that it is available through multiple different types of interfaces. And Chime 2 lets you work with an interface that you're most comfortable with. 
Um, and so there are a lot of folks using microbiome bioinformatics tools. Um, some of these folks might be more on the, um, like what I would think of as the domain scientist end um, and not necessarily the computational expert end. Um, and so if you're a domain scientist, you're um, not interested in using command line tools, you can access all of the Shine 2 functionality through graphical interfaces. Um, we have a couple of interfaces that are um, currently in the progress of being developed. Um, and within the next couple of months, we expect to be releasing a Galaxy-based interface that will allow you to access all of the Chime 2 functionality. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, if you are a data scientist, you're comfortable writing code, or you like to work in uh, something like a Jupyter Notebook interface, there is a Python 3 API that allows you to access the exact same functionality. And so the idea here is that regardless of your level of computational sophistication, there's an interface available that will help you work most efficiently. For plugin developers who might be watching this, a very cool thing about developing for Chime 2 is that you define your plugin once and then Chime takes care of creating these different interfaces for you. So you define your plugin and Chime will create a Python 3 API, a command line interface, and then the necessary wrappers to make it accessible through graphical interfaces. And one of my favorite features of Chime 2 is its retrospective data provenance tracking system, which helps you report your methods and it also helps you get technical support from us on the Chime 2 forum. Um, so now, uh, when you run an analysis with Chime 2, in order to um, be able to report that in a way that others can reproduce it, there's a huge amount of information that you need to record. Um, that is going to include things like all of the commands that you ran to generate your results, including all of the parameters that you provided to those commands. Um, but it's also important to know things about your computing environment. So what version of Chime 2 was installed and what versions of Chime 2's dependencies were installed. That information is essential for tracking bugs um, in, in an analysis workflow. Um, when you use Chime 2, all of that information is recorded for you behind the scenes and it's associated with the results that you generate. Um, and so you, um, you will have all of this, we call this the data provenance. Um, all of that will be associated with the results that you're generating um, and you can view that using Chime 2 View. If you want to explore this interactively right now, um, there's a link down at the bottom of this page um, which you can uh, access and that'll allow you to interactively explore some data provenance. Um, now in terms of the Chime 2 community, this is really centered around the Chime 2 forum which you can find at forum.chime2.org. Uh, if you go to the Chime 2 forum and you want to join, um, please uh, take a moment to read our code of conduct. That really is um, very central to our community and defines our expectations for how community members are interacting with one another. Um, this is a great place to go for technical support. Um, you can feel free to post any questions or any issues you're having with Chime there. It's also a great place to go just to have general discussion about microbiome research, uh, methods, primers, protocols, and so on are all things that uh, end up getting discussed in the Chime 2 forum. We also have a job board on there, um, which you can uh, go to to find uh, microbiome, bioinformatics, relevant jobs, or post your own jobs for free. Another key aspect of our community is our workshops. Um, so we host um, typically um, several workshops per year. Since the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we have transitioned all of this online and we've now done two online workshops with a third one coming up in the beginning of January. Um, and in our workshops, whether in person or online, we incorporate some lectures, we incorporate some hands-on learning, like you can see uh, in this top photo that I have here where students are following along with an instructor as he guides them through an analysis. Um, and we also create opportunities for small group discussions around topics of interest and for networking with um, other attendees at the workshop.
If you're interested in learning Chime 2, I would highly encourage you to get involved in one of our workshops. Um, as I mentioned, we recently have transitioned these online. Um, we're learning a lot as we go here, but we have had some really great feedback on the um, first couple of workshops that we've done online. Um, this first one in particular, the CZI Cabana workshop, um, we will be posting a lot of that as some of the earliest content on the Chime 2 YouTube channel. Um, and this was a collaboration from about 19 different instructors um, from around the world. And so we really had a great instruction team for this workshop. Um, okay, I'm going to wrap up there. Um, I just want to let you know that uh, my lab is currently hiring software engineers, postdoctoral scholars, and graduate students. Um, if you're interested in working on Chime 2, um, get in touch and we would love to chat with you. Um, you can find an announcement for one of the jobs that we have open on the Chime 2 forum job board right now, and we expect to have some others going live in the beginning of uh, 2021. Um, last, I would just like to acknowledge uh, the folks who have contributed to Chime 2. I mentioned we are a huge global collaboration. Um, the uh, folks in my lab, currently in my lab, are listed up here on this slide, and you can click a link to uh, see former lab members. Um, but importantly, I also want to thank the Chime and the Chime 2 communities. Um, the Chime 1 development team and the Chime 2 development team, we have tens of uh, folks who have um, contributed to these projects and made them what they are. Um, I would also like to acknowledge our funding sources. Chime is funded by the National Cancer Institute, the National Science Foundation, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, and the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. Um, there's a lot of uh, resources online, um, our, our forum, our documentation, and so on. Um, and so if you're just learning Chime 2, I encourage you to check those out. Thanks so much for your time, and hope to see you on the Chime 2 forum.